So for today's project, we're going to be making um, a cocktail cabinet out of an old vintage TV. This was an idea given to me uh, quite a while ago now, a good few years ago now, by a good friend of mine. Um, he said, oh, uh, would you be able to, if I um, found an old vintage TV, would you be able to do a perfect cut around the front and make it into a, make it for a door into a cocktail cabinet? <coughs> Excuse me. And I said, yeah, probably could. Um, you'd have to do it properly on the table saw, but it should be able to do it. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, uh, I hope. But um, yeah, so it was a good, good few years ago now, like I say, and um, he's never come back to me said he's had, a, um, had an opportunity to get a vintage TV, but I was on a job one day, um, a job that was, uh, it was a, a site, an old, um, uh, what was it? It was like a, an old carpentry workshop, engineer shop. It was like a builder's yard type place with lots of various uh, buildings and whatnot, uh, due for demolish. Um, and basically it had in the machine shop they had uh, two of these old vintage TVs. Um, one of them still had its innards uh, and this one didn't and to be honest I think this was a nice one out of the two. Um, so basically it was just the carcass so obviously it was going to just go in a tip or or be demolished in the crush so I thought well might as well save it and uh, use it for some good. So what I thought, and immediately I thought of my friend obviously. Um, so what we're going to do <coughs> with this is as you can see <coughs> it's completely empty. Um, still got the glass and it's still got the plastic front panel here where the knobs used to go for changing the channel and whatnot um, and the volume but the little knobs are actually missing so we're going to have to create those later on. Um, so uh, and obviously I'm going to have to raise it up off the floor so it's on, well probably don't but I was thinking it would be nice if it had legs to it so I'm going to have to try and match the legs at some point or match some wood to it to make some legs. Um, so what we're going to do first, what we really need to do first, is take out the glass, take off the plastic section here, any little fixings that are on it, um, I think there might be a couple of little, yeah, a couple of screws, there's a few little bits here and there uh, we need to deal with, but then really what we need to do first, after we've taken those out, is get all of this uh, lacquer off, which is all peeling anyway. It's not in a very nice state. I'm going to have to try it because I've, this is actually a, a, a ply. The, the carcass of it is actually ply board that's been veneered. Um, and what we're going to have to do is try and get all this lacquer off and try and not um, take off the veneer, not try and get. So we have to be very careful with it. I think um, I've started rubbing it down there gently, but we might actually have to use some um, type of uh, varnish remover. I think I don't think. Um, sanding it's going to be a great idea, it might it might ruin the, the actual veneer, but we, we, we'll see. We'll try a few different things probably, but we'll, we'll see. But what we'll do first is take these sections out. Now, judging by the age of this TV, I'm going to go ahead and say these are Imperial. <laughs> which uh, which I'm which I'm right. <laughs> what size is that? That's a quarter. That one. A quarter. Make sure it's undo. So there we are, that's the carcass. It's got all this foil paper in it as well, so we're going to have to rip that out. It's got this old wire hanging out here, so that's going to have to come out. I'm going to leave some of the other bits and bobs in here for now. So I'm going to more concentrate on getting the... Oh, so it's actually wrapped around. Because I'm going to concentrate more on getting the varnish off, I think. I've just gone ahead and I'm going to start using this wax remover by Colron. Hopefully it's going to work. Um, it's meant to be gentle on the material, so hopefully, hopefully it'll work. What it says on the tin is you meant to use a, 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 a 
fine. I'm pretty sure it says fine. It's probably where I got it wrong now, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, wearing silver gloves, pour a small amount of liquid into a wide mouth jar, dip a small piece of collar on medium steel wool. This is actually a coarse steel wool, but it's, it's good enough. <coughs> uh, into the liquid, start rubbing generous amounts in the direction of the grain, working on about one square foot at a time. The finish will become sticky and dirty as it dissolves the old finish. So hopefully, <coughs> this should work. If it doesn't, we have to get more aggressive. Yeah, I can see it is working, it's just very slow. It's meant to be gentle, that's the thing. It's meant to be gentle towards the uh, veneer or wood or whatever. You're meant to work in the grain, into the direction of the grain. Why that look nice when it's actually refinished and polished up? The colour of it is lovely. Hopefully, when I refinish it, it'll look the same colour. I won't have to stain it. I don't know what they used really was they used a stain and then a and then a varnish or a coloured varnish maybe. We we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so I don't think that was working too brilliant to be honest, because I think this is a bit more heavy duty. This um, coating, whatever they've got on here, this wax, uh, wax, this varnish. So what I've gone done is I've started applying this eco-friendly paint stripper which wasn't amazingly grey on the chest the um oh, the old um pine chest restoration I did I tried using it on the purple paint on there uh, it's like a real thick purple gloss and I mean when I say thick I really do mean thick they put, they absolutely slapped it on um it, it would have taken ages it was it was working but it just would have taken a very very long time to do it um, to get it all this is to get it all off at the time. Um, this is actually quite a messy stuff to use, paint stripper like this. I mean, it's, a, it's like a weird uh, gel. This is quite quite odd stuff really. Um, but hopefully it's it's going to work. If it doesn't, oh god, we have to go the uh, even more aggressive route, aren't we? <laughs> but I think I have every confidence that we'll get it off. Okay without damaging the veneer. Okay, let's see if this has actually uh, done it, shall we? Unfortunately, the colorant and the paint remover, um, it's kind of worked, but it wasn't amazing. So I've had to go to the big guns and use the uh, electric sander, unfortunately. So I've already burnt through a few sheets because obviously, uh, as much as I scraped it off, it's causing all sorts of problems with the gooiness. And I've washed it off and all sorts, but I've got this paint one on here now, so hopefully that'll really kick in. <laughs> my battery died um, and my spare one was also dead so um, I've kind of carried on whilst it was charging um, but just to catch up a little bit I've uh, taken the two sections two uh, pieces of wood that were on either side here which had like a little um, nut and bolt for it and that was um, basically for the 
the backs to uh, fix the back. Get my words out. The back to fix onto. Um, also, I think it fixed onto these three screws at the top here. I'm also taking out this um, little strut section down the bottom here. Uh, I've still got this one to take out, and I've also started taking out the staples which were hold was holding in that um, that foil type paper um, which I ripped out at the beginning. Um, but I still have a few more of those to do, so we'll do that now. So inside the rear of the TV, there's this little uh, license plate. Um, I don't know about countries such as America and Australia, but in England we pay for a TV license. Um, much to our disgust, but <laughs> unfortunately we do have to uh, have to pay it if we want to watch TV. Um, and it's, I quite like this. I quite like the, um, the sort of the feature of it. So I'm going to try and get that off nice and carefully and reuse that. Uh, might maybe put it on the front or just stick, put it underneath. I, I'm not sure. I might have it on view, but I like that. So I'm going to try and keep that and make a, make that a bit of a feature. So hopefully we'll be able to um, be able to remove it carefully without breaking it. I'm really hoping we can anyway. There we go. Hey. Tiny, tiny little pins. Oh, there you go. Can't really see that, but that is absolutely minute. <laughs> Smallest pin I've ever seen. Okay, so I can go in the pot as well. Right, I think we're fully stripped out there. Okay, so the next thing to do is because, like I said before, we've got a, um, a section here that actually comes out on the back. Uh, I'm not sure what the purpose that was, but it, it does. So we want to come across there um, and cut that off nice and, uh, and flush because I want the back to be nice and neat. Um, I mean, I could leave it on there. It probably wouldn't, wouldn't hurt or make any difference as such, but I prefer to have it nice and clean. So what we're going to do is going to have to put a straight edge across there. And what I'm going to use is. Um, this little ruler I picked up is an old school um, fold-out uh, carpenter's ruler. Uh, I actually bought this today. Um, it's a, uh, a vintage Raybon uh, boxwood ruler. It's really nice with brass fittings and everything. So I'm going to use this because it's the perfect size to be honest. <laughs> So what I'm going to actually do is because my friend who this is going to be for um, is actually into all his longboarding, surfing, skating, all that sort of stuff. Um, he's, he's kind of a, a bit of a, a sort of a, a ska punk, if you like. So what I was thinking is I'm going to use some of the trusted pl um, pallet wood, and I'm going to um, plane the sides down so it fits nice and flush on a butt joint wise, and then I'm going to glue that down onto the base here on the inside. Um, I'm not going to plane the, the, the face surface of it because um, from past experience um, it's a bit of a pain. It tends to rip out a lot of uh, chunks because it's, I think with plant wood it's not exactly prime cuts, it's quite, um, it's, it's sort of, it's not, like I said, it's not choice cuts, it's, it's the bad or the, what you I suppose consider more the waste of um, the tree if you like, uh, the, the sort of ruggedy bits and uh, bits with like um, knots and whatnot, pieces of knots in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, when I've glued that in, when it's all dried and everything, I'm going to just sand it down with a power sander, make it nice and smooth, leave it a bit more um, rustic because the, the way I'm going to go about this now is because it's a retro TV, uh, I'm going to kind of make the inside kind of more like it's like it's an actual decking on a, on a, on a beach hut or something. Um, Obviously I'm going to still try and go for the classic mirror at the back which you get in all these uh, cocktail cabinets but I'm still undecided on what I'm doing on the sides as of yet. Uh, I'm kind of thinking I might do uh, like a wave type pattern or so, whether it's going to be painted, whether it's going to be sort of a pitch that's mod, mod podged in there, I'm not too sure. But um, <clears throat> that's kind of the route I'm going, the kind of surfer route. 
uh, internally. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just um, planing the sides of these uh, bits of pallet wood now. Um, and then I'm going to chop the ends off where the obviously the nails have gone through and it's all splitted at the ends and stuff. Uh, and then, and then uh, start gluing it in. Now, I've been using my acorn plane quite a bit recently. I like my um, Draper, my other one's a Draper Expert, my other number four. So not a relatively expensive one by any means, but not the, not the cheapest either. Probably only looking really about £25 or the fork for the Draper Expert. It's a nice plane though, it's got, it comes with a spare plane iron which is quite handy and it holds an edge quite well as well so it's, that's good. so it's well worth the money but this one came in amongst all that massive load of tools I bought that time and this one is a made in England one obviously because it's acorn if anyone's ever heard of acorn I looked into it they were a bit of a funny one I think they were a small phone and they, I'm pretty sure they got eventually bought out by Stanley or someone like that like a lot of brands do, get bought up by other people. And uh, I must say, this plane is absolutely fantastic. And the, the plane iron is the original as well. And it holds an edge beautifully. Nice thin, thin ones there. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> 